Step aside, X-Men 97, we're going to the future. Over 100 years into the future with this X-Men 2099 omnibus. What's going on, everybody? Jen Min here, and today we're going to take an advanced look at this book. So happy that Marvel decided to continue publishing the 2099 stuff. We recently took a look at Volume 2 for Spider-Man, hoping to see a Doom 2099, and maybe even like a compilation book of all the other stuff that has smaller runs, Ghost Rider, Punisher, the 2099 Unlimited stuff. If you guys are looking to pick up any omnibus, if you want to pre-order your favorite covers, if you're in the States, check out organicpricebooks.com. They have super fast shipping with bomb-proof packaging. Plus, you can save $2 on every order by using code GEMMINT at checkout. And my international folks, I got you covered too. If you're in the EU, you got to check out comicsbugle.com. You can pre-order Omnis and other collected editions as well, and you don't pay until the book is ready to ship. Hulk-proof, eco-friendly packaging with free shipping and no taxes or import fees if you're in the EU. Plus, they have customer service guaranteed to respond to you within 24 hours. So if this book is of any interest, hit up those websites and let's take a look at it. All right, so this book comes out on April 30th. This is the Direct Market Variant by Tim and Greg Hildebrandt. We'll talk more about the brothers when we get to the Oasis graphic novel. The regular standard cover for this is the cover for issue number one by Ron Lim and Adam Kubert. This has 1,240 pages, $125 cover price. And here is that lovely Spine X-Men 2099 logo. You have the team on the bottom. And then on the back, of course, you get all of the covers. So this collects the entire run, issues 1 through 35 of X-Men 2099. It includes the Fall of the Hammer storyline, which you can see the covers here, which does double dip with Spider-Man 2099 Omnibus Volume 1, but it makes sense. Maybe you didn't collect that and you're just a fan of the X-Men, but it does collect that storyline. It also has Oasis, which I mentioned before. It has the X-Men 2099 Special Issue 1 and X-Nation 1 through 6, which was completely written by John Francis Moore. We'll talk more about him a little bit later as well. All right, and then the inside of the dust jacket here. So we're in the year 2099. The head of this new X-Men team is Zian Chi Zan. And we have all new mutants here. You have Crystalline, Cerebra, Mean Streak, Serpentina, Metalhead. You have Fitz. And then you would later get some more characters. Noah Singe. You'd get Bloodhawk and Junk Pile. And then you have the creators here. So John Francis Moore, like I mentioned. Not only did he do this entire run, but he did the first half of Doom 2099, which is mentioned here as well. And then it was taken over by Warren Ellis, I think, which... Gives me hope that we'll see a Doom 2099 omnibus. He also did Factor X, which was like the Age of Apocalypse version of X Factor. Uh, then you have art, well, really pencils by Ron Lim. There's inks on here by Adam Kubert and others. But Ron Lim, if you like that 90s Silver Surfer style, it's got a very familiar look here. It's not cosmic, but it feels like Ron Lim. And then you also have Jan Dersima. Got a gorgeous wraparound cover here. Also by Ron Lim and Adam Kubert. This was the center fold poster from issue number one. So very cool how they did that and still included the original dust jacket spine. All right, let's open her up. So we just have some black cover pages. More Brothers Hildebrandt uh, for Bloodhawk here. Then we have all the credits. Great graphic design on this book. Table of contents as well, every issue when it came out, the name of the issue, what page they're on, with page numbers on the bottom as well. Then it opens right up to X-Men 2099, issue one. I love how all those issue ones had this same kind of border. And this also had a gold version too that had additional pinups, which are collected in the back. So here we go, Ron Lim Art. Again, you have those same vibes. This is the type of omnibus that I love. Like, these are issues that I would have collected and tried to put together a full run. And uh, I was actually starting to do that before I found the omnibus format. Probably the most notable character, and, and mainly for the action figure, I would say, which we'll get to that towards the end of the book as well. But, man, this feels like those early 90 image comics. It's, I mean, it's 90s comics all day. Here's issue two. The art style is great. The story, uh, I mean, I like the 2099 stuff. I'm just a fan of it. I don't think it's for everybody. It's, you know, a whole new cast of characters, all different mutants. They have the same dream as Xavier. 
but uh, it just plays out differently. I do think that the Spider-Man 2099 is probably the best out of this entire universe, but the fact that this was still created and now collected in this oversized format, uh, I'm just super impressed. I, I would have never imagined that Marvel would have published this. So the art is great. The story is cool. I mean, if you dig mutant stuff, it's here's the fall of the hammer, which we read and reviewed for that Spider-Man 2099. But yeah, I mean, I think if you grew up with this stuff, it's going to just hit you that much harder than nostalgia of it all. Fall of the hammer, which we've already discussed. But again, you know, worth collecting in here. You get our Spidey, Miguel O'Hara cameos, Doom cameos, Thor with his Thorites. Of course, the Punisher of the Future. Uh, I think this is the conclusion here. Yeah, part five of five. So that's where you're going to get like Peter David and uh, Rick Leonardi and those creators. All right, but back onto the X-Men storyline. So this is really just going to be an overview of the book. I would need to reread this whole thing to really give you a thorough review. But art style is right up my alley if you're a 90s kid like myself. Even these character designs, man, it feels like Spawn's overkill. It feels like uh, Bad Rock. And like, like, like I mentioned, those early image days, it looks like Richter-type vibes here with the dude with the mask. So the entire uh, series by John Moore and Ron Lim. And then we'll get into the Hildebrand stuff. So all the covers, Halloween Jack, the villain for this arc. This was such a 90s thing to do as well, right? Like do the uh, horizontal double page spread. This guy he reminds me of like Transformers. Even this guy has got like pit vibes to it. So then we're on to X-Men Oasis. Actually, the Hildebrandt brothers do the cover for the issue prior as well, which is the cover for this omnibus, the uh, 2099 special. So they do the cover for this, but then they do this graphic novel with John Francis Moore, and what's special about the Hildebrandt brothers, they did the painting for the first Star Wars poster, the iconic Star Wars poster. They also did some of the Lord of the Rings calendars, which were super popular, and this was their first attempt at doing interiors. And there, there's a great afterward in this book that talks about you know the learning process here and how difficult it is to paint in this format, making sure the lighting is there, making sure not to use too many colors to throw off the flow of it all. So super dope. Now, the Hildebrand brothers, what they mean to me is when I got into this hobby, when I got into comics via Joe Jusco's 1992 Marvel Masterpieces, I went on a binge. Like, if you know me, like, if one's good, two's better. So I went on a binge collecting Marvel trading cards after that. And who did the follow-up series? None other than the brothers. So I really know them from, I think it's the 93 and, and I think 94 Marvel masterpieces as well. So their graphic novel, here is Bob uh, Budansky talking about what I was just mentioning about their history. And then uh, John Francis Moore talking about working with the brothers and the things that they've learned and great read. Awesome to have that collected in here. Then we jump back into the regular run. Now we're getting to like late nineties, early two thousands here. So you start to see the style change a little bit, like the colors doing that more nineties stuff. They start doing more like exaggerated word balloons and sound effects. Let me see if we get to any of that stuff. Yeah. So just, you can, you know what I'm saying? It gets into like, that more bubbly looking feel. I personally prefer the 90s style more than the early 2000s, but interesting to see the evolution take place just in this run. It almost has like an anime vibe, like those exaggerated teeth. This feels very Age of Apocalypse with the X-Nation stuff. Yeah, but cool to see that six issue series collected in here as well. All right, so on to the bonus stuff. So here is that poster that I mentioned, which is the same graphic that's on the wraparound hardcover. Here we have some uh, Ron Lim sketches, Crystalline, Mean Streak here, Zian, Metalhead, Skullfire. Here we have a X-Men anniversary issue giving us an article on this. More character introductions. You got John Francis Moore with an old 
interview. Here's that uh, Hildebrand poster. Awesome. It's so cool to see, like, they really gravitated towards this X-Men 2099. Like, they really wanted to be a part of it. I just, I don't know how successful this was, man. I, I mean, I don't think it was nearly as successful as Spider-Man 2099, but it's a shame because they put a lot into it. Here's some of the trading cards, like I mentioned, and then those action figures, like I mentioned as well. I remember seeing these action figures in, like, preview magazines coming up as a kid. You see what I'm saying? So they put a lot into it. And uh, I just don't know if they got the return, man. Even with that being said, I'm super happy that they published this omnibus. Oh, look at this old school Humberto Ramos. Shout out to Humberto. All right. And then here are the Bob Larkin pinups. So that X-Men 2099 issue one, the blue cover was the standard. The gold one was the deluxe that had these eight pinups. So super cool to get those collected in the back of this Omni. This guy reminds me of Havoc. Here is the Fall of the Hammer covers. They're connecting covers, but they didn't really do it good. <laughs> like I don't know why. Why? I mean, it looks good here, but I don't know why the, the lines didn't line up. Oh, yeah, here's the Deluxe Edition. The Trade Paperback Edition has uh, updated coloring. It's got that purple border. Here goes another poster. I think it's the same one that we saw earlier by the Brothers Hildebrandt. And then the uh, original art for issue number one. This video is brought to you by Ninja Funk Bad Music number one. Following the battle at Ninja Funk Dojo and the capture of BB, Bad Music retreats to their headquarters at the Nexus. With the love of Laser Wolf's life as irresistible bait, there's no doubt in Queen Bad's mind that her nemesis will come knocking and she's ready for him. Will Laser Wolf, JPG McFly, and Wolfgang see the trap for what it is or run headlong into disaster? Find out in Ninja Funk Bad Music number one in stores April 17th. I actually had an opportunity to interview Gray Hildebrandt a few years back and I passed on it because I just didn't really know what to ask him. Now looking at this book and thinking on all the great artwork that him and his brother did, I really should have took up on that offer and uh, I kind of regret it now, but... Love this omnibus, the art style, what is collected, what it could lead to in the future, no pun intended. Let me know what you think about the X-Men 2099 omnibus in the comments down below. And I appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.